Mother, you carried me, you raised me. How have I betrayed you so much? What is up guys, welcome back. So today we are going to be going over my skincare routine, my current skincare routine as promised. This is gonna be my morning routine and my evening routine. And this is coming out of my second trimester. I am rounding out my 27th week currently of pregnancy. And so I did a check-in right at the end of my first trimester, which was actually my like little low key announcement video that I was pregnant. And there have been so many changes in my skin <laughs> over the last trimester, over the last like 13, 14 weeks that there are multiple products in some cases for like different decisions that my skin made <laughs> while all of this was happening. So we have a lot to get through. I have a lot to cover and we're going to be talking about pigmentation, different kind of moisture changes as I felt like my skin like literally changed from oily to dry, acne, things like that. So there will probably be something for everybody in this video. <laughs> I feel like my skin has kind of been around the world and back. Yeah, guys, let's go ahead and jump in to my skincare routine. And I will make this quick because we have a lot of things that I wanna talk about today. But uh, if you're curious about this disgusting band-aid on my finger, trust me, what's underneath it is worse. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, two nights ago, to my cat fur monster retching on me. And you drill, your instincts start firing because you don't want a cat to throw up on the bed. And cats throw up all the time, you know, but like this one just happened to be in the middle of the night. My instinct was to pick him up and throw him on the floor. Cats always land on their feet. It was fine. But when I did it, I must have just slammed my nail into his side and the nail broke off into the quick in a really, really like, I thought it was gonna be okay because my nails have never been this like strong before. So in the past, if my nails broke off, they would break off and it was just like, eh, you know, whatever. It was almost like I had just like trimmed my nail. But as I was like trying to fall asleep again, it was throbbing and I was like, something is wrong. And so I went to the freezer to get some ice and in the light of the freezer, I saw what I had done and it is really, really awful. It was just as I had been like so excited about like talking to you guys about like, oh my gosh, I'm loving having my nails long again. They finally recovered from dip nails and blah, blah, blah. And then this happened and it hurts so much. Like it's like, I also have a paper cut on my neck from carrying packages. I'm just kind of like bringing a bunch of just dumb disasters, like clumsy disasters on myself right now, um, on top of everything else having to do with pregnancy. So that is the story behind this. It's really like not cute to look at right now, like with this bandaid on it, but I promise you it is a million times worse under there. Anyway, so we're gonna start with my morning routine. That's kind of the way that I typically do these videos. And I always do these videos with no makeup on so that you guys can see what I'm working with. I haven't been getting any peels obviously because I'm pregnant and I can't use any kind of like retinol or what's the other one, hydroquinone or anything like that, which I think is in the VI peel that I typically get. So a lot of the challenges that I've been up against since I got pregnant were like basically just trying to prevent as much as I could. I know I can't do any peeling, but just try and hold off the pigment for as long as I can with different you know, brightening products, none of them being as strong as something that would peel my skin. So this is what I always start with in the morning. I literally just rinse my face with water because moisture barrier, I always say that, but like I don't soap my face in the morning. Mainly I don't have the patience. I like to go sit out and have my coffee outside. And so I know that I have to do my skincare before I have my coffee. So it's the first thing I do when I wake up, I go and I rinse my face and then I put on a moisturizer first. So <laughs> We're already getting into like a multifaceted situation here because I've had three moisturizers this month that I've used for different reasons. Actually, we'll really only talk about two for this purpose, daytime. <laughs> you know, you kind of want something a little bit lighter weight in the daytime. And this is more recent. This is kind of what I think I'll probably end up going back to just because it's more cost effective. This came in my detox box. So this is the super sensitive skin stuff from Graydon Skincare. It is a really great plant-based, you know, clean, self-identifies as clean. Uh, skincare company. This isn't blowing my mind as far as like hydration is concerned. I'm using it because I have it. I'm using it because it's it's nice and my skin seems happy with it, but it's not hydrating enough to use at night or anything like that. It's not like blowing my mind in terms of like, wow, my skin really drinks that up and loves it. It actually kind of makes my skin feel a little bit tight afterwards. And so um, it's just not something that I can like see myself repurchasing when I'm done with it. However, I have repurchased this and it is phenomenal. So this is the brand new Glossier Priming Moisturizer Balance. 
In my last skincare routine video, I talked about how I couldn't talk about the moisturizer that I was using. It was this, and it's because they pushed back the release date. It was supposed to come out in like March, and they pushed it until like just a few weeks ago. And so I announced it on my Instagram, but I haven't got a chance to talk about it on my channel yet. Guys, this is an oil control gel cream. It's beautiful, it's cost effective, it doesn't have retinol in it the way that the um, priming, regular priming moisturizer does. And so it's just like ideal for uh, normal to sensitive to oily skin types. I definitely used this more in the beginning of my second trimester when my skin was super oily. And I used it in the morning and at night because I found that like I just didn't need really, really heavy hydration on my skin. But now I would use this just in the morning because I then use an SPF on top of that. And I just don't want to feel like super greasy. So the sunscreen that I was using that I actually used up was a sunscreen that I would highly recommend. It is the Purito Centella Green Level Unscented. The only reason I stopped using it is because it has like a tiny bit of salicylic acid in it. And I was told salicylic acid isn't great for pregnancy. If I can like make a small change in my routine, I'm going to, you know, there's nothing vital about that salicylic acid being in that sunscreen to me. And so I switched to this one. This is the Purito Comfy Water Sunblock. The only thing that is not awesome about this is that it kind of pills under makeup if you are in the habit of really buffing your makeup in. And so if you're not pregnant, use the Centella Green Level. <laughs> I will go back to it. I've turned my sister onto it. I've turned my mom onto it because, and both of them have this quality to them, but this is like a K-Beauty SPF. And so it's like a chemical, I think it's mostly chemical sunscreen, but they have things that in there that like preserve the effects of the actual like SPF value of it for longer during the day that we don't consider to be SPF value in the US, if that makes sense. And so it's like, you can't make that claim with these ingredients. It's a whole complicated thing. The whole thing being, this is a chemical sunscreen that works better than American chemical sunscreens. There are American chemical sunscreens that work like this, but they can't call themselves sunscreens, basically. And so uh, this is super, super awesome. I like it a lot, but I just have to be careful when I'm putting my makeup on, you know, because it will just like, if you're aggressive, it'll just peel up. So I would go with this Intelli Green level. If you're not pregnant, this is just kind of a temporary fix. And then that's my morning. That's my morning, no big deal. It's literally two products. It's one of those moisturizers and then an SPF. And then I just kind of go about my day, do my makeup. Maybe I don't do my makeup, but it protects me from like blue light, even if I'm just inside all day, which I mostly am because it's a million degrees outside. I'm sorry that I'm talking so fast. <laughs> I feel like there's so many products in front of me and I just, I want to believe that my routine is really simple. <laughs> I think in reality, it just is, it's just not. So uh, the main thing is I've been getting a lot of cool like skincare in the mail lately from a bunch of different really cool companies that I've always wanted to try. And so I've just been crashing through trying a bunch of products and a lot of them are just really good. And so there have been like a lot of things that I've used <laughs> in the last like, you know, 13, 14 weeks. I did just get a big PR package from Versed Skincare. And then I also just got this in the mail that I haven't tried yet, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, good Molecules just came out with their color Let's try that again. Discoloration correcting serum formulated with cetyl trinexamate mesylate to target discoloration and promote an, an even skin tone. My biochemist out there can let me know what the heck that is. I don't know what that is, but the, uh, the thing that they're really introducing here is that they are actually giving away their formulas. Like they have the, all the percentages of everything on the side of their box. They're being completely like more transparent than I have ever seen any other company be. And uh, I don't know, maybe other companies do this, but I think that this is pretty groundbreaking. Very, very cool. So um, yeah, Good On Good Molecules, a very affordable company. I've not tried this yet, but I heard it is fantastic. Okay, night routine. So the first thing that I do, if I've worn makeup that day, is I take off my makeup. I use the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. This is 15 dollars. This is a very cost-effective, uh, cleansing balm that works really, really well. It travels really well. It actually does what it says it's going to do. It does actually take your makeup off. It does actually go water soluble and rinse into a milk. There are a lot of them out there that say that they're going to. I am not about to put a hot towel on my face and soak my makeup off and get a towel dirty every single time I take my makeup off. That's just not reasonable to me. And then to have to scrub an oily product off of my face, there are way too many of them out there that claim to be cleansing balms when really they are just balms there's no cleansing action happening. Like, 
oil will always break down makeup. There's no science there. So anyway, this is awesome. I like it a lot. Burst did just send me theirs as well. So, you know, when I run out of this, I'll try that one. But this totally, totally works and gets my full endorsement. The other half of my double cleanse, if you're unfamiliar with the double cleanse, it's basically like, let's mobilize all the stuff that you've been wearing all over your face all day and let's get it off of there. But now let's go ahead and like make sure we do like a real, like a clean, you know what I mean? Just like a good cleanse and get everything off. So the get everything off step is the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. I don't know if I'll ever, like I have tried so many other cleansers and I just don't really see any reason to like deviate from this long term. It's super cost effective. It's $18 for this. You get six ounces. It's incredibly gentle. It works for every single skin type and it doesn't disturb your moisture barrier. It doesn't suds. It doesn't hurt when you get it in your eyes. It's amazing stuff. Like it's just incredible. And like, there's absolutely no reason for me to ever like question it in my eyes. Okay. <laughs> now we get into the technology. I do want to mention guys, Caroline Hirons just did a big, long Instagram live with a mm, biochemist. She's a doctor. She's a doctor of something. She's got her doctorate in some kind of chemical formulation technology having to do with skincare. She worked for Fresh. She worked for a bunch of other companies. And it's them basically breaking down a lot of the claims that kind of get under Caroline Hirons' skin, so to speak, clean and cruelty-free and uh, sustainability and things like that, because the main takeaway for them was like, they wanted to communicate how nuanced it all is, like how the differences are like, oh, okay, we wanna get away from petrochemicals, but then we're destroying rainforests with palm oil, or we want to use post-consumer materials, but sometimes we don't know what was in them in the first place and maybe that's not that awesome so we have to think about that kind of sourcing or you know a lot of the vegan ingredients that we are using that are coming from plants are actually more exhausting to the environment because the things that they are replacing were actually um throwaway materials from other manufacturing processes and so now those don't have a buyer anymore and they're just going to waste too it is extremely educational. Like I found it to be very, very good. <laughs> and I highly recommend watching it. It didn't really change my stance on anything because you guys know I am a big fan of nuance. <laughs> I'm a big fan of things not being super black and white. You know, I came out of Clean Routine 2019 being like, there's just a lot more here than things being good or evil. And if you haven't watched that video that I put out at the end of the year last year, I will link it below. And the reason that I call attention to that is just because I'm a big believer in, you know, dermatologist approved, really powerful ingredients when used the right way, especially when it comes to the fact that you can't hope and dream and feel good away. Things like melasma and pigmentation, <laughs> you just can't. Doesn't matter how good the ingredients make you feel in your soul, they're not going to fade the pigmentation that you don't want on your face. And when I say pigmentation, I mean things like melasma, I mean sun, damage. I do not mean melanin that is like naturally occurring in people's skin. Don't bleach your skin. That's not the point. The point is I have an ever growing melasma mustache and I just freckle and pigment really, really easily. And things like this where I've had zits that because I'm not in kind of a, um, a peel cycle right now of any kind, they just, even though they're gone, they just live there. Do you see that? Like how they're just, you know what I mean? I have zits that have completely healed and they're just gonna be ghosts forever under there. <laughs> and I'm sorry, there is just only so much that like natural products that are made out of plants yanked from the ground can really do. The lab made ingredients are the things that are going to actually solve that. And I will almost always recommend starting at your dermatologist because it's where you're going to see results. They're going to give you products that A, they will instruct you on how to use safely and B, they're gonna, I mean, for all the money that we pour into the feel good of different products for different buzz ingredients, you go to your dermatologist, girl, you're gonna see results. It's going to be expensive, but you're gonna get guaranteed results. And like, I'm here for results. That said, <laughs> after I do my double cleanse, the first thing that I have been putting on my face has been this. So this is the Full Moon Serum from Graydon. And I actually really like this. It has I believe it's called moth bean extract in it, which is like a semi-retinoid, but it's definitely not a retinol. And I feel like mm, the most that I can expect from it is that it kind of holds off pigmentation. 
those are the promises that like that's the extent of the promises that I feel like these kinds of products can offer is that like it can somewhat arrest the uh, the pigmentation happening but it's not going to actively fade it and I think that that is like what vitamin C does that's what Bakuchiol does that's what something like moth bean extract does any of these natural retinol alternatives they're not retinol. <laughs> I mean, you hear Caroline Hirons, who is not my personal hero, guys. Don't, don't like, you know, uh, take this as like a full-throated endorsement for her. I think she's kind of a bully a lot of times. <laughs> like she comes for brands for like no, seemingly no reason a lot of the time. But anyway, I do think that she has a wealth of knowledge in her brain and she's extremely no nonsense. It's just like, you have to kind of get past that first layer of like her, like, um, I don't know, blow hardness, I guess. She's just got this big blustery attitude. But anyway, I do really, really trust, you know, her experience and what she, you know, gets kind of frustrated with is like retinols claiming to have the same kind of uh, results as retinols and they just don't. <laughs> They're not going to, nothing's going to. And so I don't want to promise that this is going to, but it does actually help with brightening. And I, I have seen results from it in that respect where I just see that uh, my skin is pigmenting less. <laughs> it's holding it up. It just uh, helps like, you know, these kinds of things heal on my face a little bit, but by no means like overnight results or like any kind of peeling effect. Now, <laughs> I saw my dermatologist today. <laughs> I saw her for a different reason, for a completely different like skin check, but I asked for her advice because I had to stop using my basically like personally mixed medicated brightening cream that I was using to go between peels because you know, you can't just go get a peel every month. Like you're, it, the recovery is really long. And so um, I got a lot of really great results from using the last version of this that I had. This is the Revy Age Brightening Cream, okay? you can't, they don't even have a website. <laughs> like you can Google it and see a picture of the package, but like they don't even have a way of buying this online. You can only get it at a dermatologist. And on its own, it has lactic acid and niacinamide and I don't know, other things that I don't quite understand that I'm sure are fantastic. But they had in the past, mixed in 0.025% retinoic acid into it for me, which obviously is not in this formulation, and then uh, a certain degree of arbitase, and I'm not sure what the percentage is. And I asked her what she recommended, and she's like, we're not gonna do retinol, but we can do the arbitase. And so uh, this is still custom mixed for me, but even alone, apparently this will show brightening results. So I'm gonna start using this tonight because I really miss this girl in my life, okay? And she did tell me that like breastfeeding is okay with retinol. Um, just, you know, not while incubating actual baby. And then I also can't do any Botox or fillers, even while I'm nursing. So these were all questions that I had for her today, but I'm very, very excited to get back on using this because I think that I might see some actual brightening results because this is medicated, you know? And I got her actual approval to use this. V excited. I'm so out of breath, you guys. Oh, I'm so out of breath. <laughs> it's like, uh... <laughs> Also, I wanted to share this little anecdote. My mom, who I bought her a her first chemical peel for Christmas, and she really, really liked it, but obviously chemical peels have to come, you know, in a series. I think that I saw amazing results the first time, but I was also like 30 when I got my first one, or maybe 31. And my mom is 63 and she's like, girl, they're just more on my skin. I've got 30 more years on you. It's gonna take more than one peel. And I'm like, okay. So she did see results, but like just not really enough for her. And so she went to her dermatologist and her dermatologist prescribed her tretinoin, you know what I mean? Like an actual like Retin-A tube that's also 0.025% uh, retinoic acid, which is, I, I might be the strongest you can do. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But she was not really doing it for like cosmetic reasons. She's doing it because she has this like crazy, like weird, uh, almost like KP on her skin, this like weird um, texture. And they're like little sand granules under her skin. And so the doctor was like, look, retinol is the only thing that's gonna solve this. And I was like, I'm not a professional, but I must agree. I believe the retinol solves almost everything. And so anyway, talking to her on the phone yesterday 
and um, she's telling me about her skincare routine. And it, I think I might have actually been talking to her at night while she was doing it. That's what it was. It was like she was having me on speakerphone while she was in the shower. This is the relationship that I have with my mother. <laughs> she's just like, that's not a reason to get off the phone. Um, and so she's doing her skincare or whatever. And she's like, you know, I'm really starting to see results from this stuff. And I was like, oh, are you using your sunscreen? She's like, yeah, I bought that Purito stuff that you told me to buy. And I was like, okay, cool. And she's like, my skin feels kind of tight though. And I was like, uh, what moisturizer are you using? She's like, oh, I ran out of moisturizer. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, you're using um, a medicated tretinoin cream and you're not using a moisturizer? And she's like, should I be? And I was like, mom, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I was like, do you have oils? Do you have anything? She's like, I have some oils. I was like, use the oils. <laughs> like, you gotta do something. She's like, I don't know. I just thought that this was like the one thing that I was supposed to be using. I was like, mother, you carried me you raised me. How have I betrayed you so much that I run a channel on beauty and I am obsessed with retinol and I did not impart to you the knowledge that you need to be using a moisturizer with a retinol cream. I just felt so bad. I was like, mom, how are you dealing with your skin being that dry? And she goes, my skin is always dry. And I was like, it doesn't have to be. Like, I just wanted to go like fly there and rub moisturizer on her face. And so she goes, oh, I've got some Egyptian magic. And I was like, I don't know what that is. She goes, I'm gonna rub that on my face. And I was like, okay, better than nothing. So yeah, I felt so bad. I was just like, I have done you wrong. I have betrayed you that <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine using a retinol cream and then being like, do do do, I'm gonna go to bed now. Like, no way, use a moisturizer. Anyway, on to moisturizer. So like I said, these two have not in, like the past six weeks or so, like the second half of my second trimester, have not been strong enough to give me the hydration that I want. And for me, the symptom of not using something that's rich enough when my skin is really dry, which by the way, that's the main reason that I switched over was just that like my skin went from like unusually oily to drier than it has ever been. I'm talking like, I told you guys in one video, I lean over and my back stings because like my skin stretches ever so slightly and it all just prickles and stings and I'm just like, oh my God, where is my like, you know, body oil or whatever. But I was noticing it on my neck as well when I would wake up in the morning and everything just hurt and it felt crepey, you know, and that's just lack of moisture. So I went from using these two to the one that you guys recommended to me as a dupe for the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream, which was, you know, the one that I had been using for so long, but I'm really working, and I have. I've worked Drunk Elephant out of my routine. And so this is the Acure Radically Rejuvenating Whipped Night Cream, Multipeptides, Ferulic Acid, and Vitamin C. 100% vegan, 0% pretentious, and very inexpensive. I think this was like $22 or something like that for like a, you know, a good overnight cream. You guys were right. This is great. This is really, really good. It has the same kind of like weight to it that the Proteiny does where it's super nourishing without feeling oily or greasy or super heavy. It's really, really good. <laughs> it's like, why was I paying $68 for, uh, for the Proteiny? And I believe that this is a far more recycled. I mean, I have a, a TerraCycle box, but for those who do not, or don't have a place to like drop that kind of stuff off, I believe that this packaging is still recyclable, uh, to the extent that plastic is recyclable. Don't get me started. But, um, the, uh, Proteiny airless pump is completely non-recyclable. So very cool. I will say, <laughs> I ordered their SPF and I ordered their overnight glycolic. The SPF is a nightmare. We talked about this. It does this weird curdly thing where it just goes full spackle on my face, like instantly, like these white curdles on my cheeks and it won't move and I have to like wash it off. It's bizarre. And, uh, and so I don't recommend that one. And then their glycolic, which I, I don't know, I, like, I don't know whether I just don't like have a really good experience with glycolic as a rule. I'm not sure whether it was me or the product, but it was like the beginning of a lot of this acne. And it could have also been just a hormonal moment in my pregnancy. I don't want to assign blame just to that product, but at the same time, um, it was the thing that I had changed in my routine recently when a bunch of stuff started popping up on my face. And so I just stopped using it. This is truly great. So thank you guys. Okay, and then we have my oils and then I'll talk about like my like masks and treatments and stuff really quick. So I have three oils that I've been using that I shared somewhat 
in my haul video that I did recently when I just kind of binged on skincare, body care, hair care stuff. But um, this is the OC Essential Hydrating Oil. This was really good, again, for when my skin was not super dry. It's not enough <laughs> for very dry skin. It doesn't have that really like unctuous, luxurious, like glow thing to it. It's more, I feel like, a balancing oil for people who don't have like tragically dry skin the way that I do. But it does smell really nice, which is definitely not supposed to be a selling point of any skincare product, but it does happen to smell really nice. And, uh, and I don't think that it's bad, it's just not enough. But these two are ones that I use every single night and it's kind of um, redundant, but I go with the pure cold pressed rosehip seed oil from Good Molecules and it's just pure rosehip oil, whereas this is the greatest blend in the world of all kinds of things. So I do this first just because I kind of want to double down on my rosehip oil because apparently it does have a little bit of like pregnancy safe vitamin A in it. I'm just going on a wing and a prayer at this point, but I already had it. It's 10 Dwellas on their website. It's a very, very good little product. I like it very much. And then this is just my, mm, mm, this is just such an absolute treasure of a product. This is the Iconolab Renewal Face Oil. I think this is like my fourth bottle of this or something. It, I have 20% off down below if you're interested and they do do a like trial size of it that they sell on their website. I can't recommend this highly enough. This is the only, and I say this every time, this is the only face oil, beauty oil I have ever used that makes me look younger period, full stop. Like I'm not, you know, nothing is going to make wrinkles go away. We talked about that in my last video. If you want your wrinkles to go away, you have to go and freeze them with Botox. That's just a thing, you know what I mean? But as far as like the, the micro lines and everything like that from the standpoint of cell turnover and just general nourishment and plumping and stuff like that, this does it all. <laughs> like it's never too early to start using something like this as a maintenance product and also I, oh, I want to send one to my mom. You know what I mean? I feel like she would put this on her face and go, oh. <laughs> you know, because there's just absolutely nothing unnecessary in it, but it's just chock full of fantastic stuff. I know it has some rose hip oil in it. I know it has some more rose oil in it of some other kind, but it's also got a bunch of other stuff in it. And uh, it's all handmade uh, in small batches and you're supposed to keep it out of the light and everything like that. It has a little pouch it goes in. Tanya Gold is the owner of the company. Sweetest human being ever. Like when she initially reached out to me to try her product, I immediately was like, yes, this is my kind of person. Like that it was the most sincere, straightforward, unpretentious, and just genuinely nice email that I've gotten. Like it's just super rare to find a company and these are the companies that I tend to try and seek out, but she actually found me. No matter how big their company gets, no matter how great their, their product is or whatever, they're totally unpretentious and they talk to you very sincerely and from the heart. And she's just like the most genuine person and like someone that I just, I'm so proud to be able to talk about her product, but at the same time, I'm so proud because it's a really, really, really good product. I love it a lot. So anyway, that's my kind of lab spiel. <laughs> and then I always end with this at the end of the night. This is the Mother Dirt AO Plus Mist for face and body. This is a probiotic spray. I've been using it for years and years and years. It is currently condensing a little bit, con con condensating, I don't know. But uh, I have it because it was in the fridge and it was cold and now it's not as cold. So um, anyway, spray this all over your face. This one, I dropped it, so I screwed it up, so I have to turn it upside down. There we go. This is a remarkable product. It is $50 a bottle. There are plenty of other probiotic products out there, you know, from Tula and things like that. They're all gonna cost you a lot of money because probiotics are just a really cool technology. This is the only one that I know of that requires being kept in the refrigerator because of the live bacterial culture. Okay, Khaki. Because of the live bacteria cultures that are in it and it's incredibly effective at preventing bacterial breakouts for me over time. Also, I'll put it under my arm sometimes if I've got stinky armpits. I will use it many other places, anywhere, anywhere you can imagine that you might not want your bacteria conspiring against you. This is a great product for that. So athletes, summertime, sweating, just, you know, let your mind wander. Let's talk about my kind of like not every single night treatments that I do for the specific reasons that I do them. We will talk first about congestion. Congestion in my pores. 
I have found, especially during pregnancy when I can't use anything that's helping with cell turnover, like in any aggressive way, that sometimes it's time to bring in the enzymes, you know? And I've actually been trying out one from Tracy Martin that they just sent me, but like the jury's out on it, but it's really, really nice. Like it's, it's this like turquoise mask, it's, it's lovely. But this is one that I can definitely, you know, put my stamp of approval on, plus it's good molecules, it's $16, it's super cost effective. So this is the pineapple exfoliating powder. You mix it with water in the palm of your hand, you rub it on your face. It makes this really nice frothy milk. And I only use this when I'm starting to notice like, you know, blackheads kind of, or just clogged pores, you know, congestion around, you know, the kind of tight spots, like in my nostril area or like around my chin and stuff, spots that I tend to touch too much or food touches or whatever. They just tend to be kind of hormonally congested. And I find that this really helps to decongest. And again, I'm not a big, fan of like a physical exfoliant, but this does not have anything in it that is meant to actually be scratchy. It just happens to be a powder. And so when you put it with water, you could massage it in your hands until it's just a milk. But when you put it on your face at first, you feel kind of the texture of the powder, but it's just the pineapple enzymes dissolving on your face. So I've never noticed any kind of irritation or like scratchiness or redness even afterwards. It's super, super gentle. But keep that in mind if you're like, totally anti anything gritty being on your face. This does like when you first put it on feel a little bit gritty because it's a powder. <laughs> if I am dealing with a very dry situation or I am dealing with things that just won't gosh darn heal. I talk about that. I've been talking about this since it came out. It came out almost two years ago. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Overnight Sensation Brightening Sleep Mask. This is $62 and for that you get 3.4 ounces. It will last you at least 10 months. It is, cr I use it almost every single night and it'll last me like eight months. It is amazing stuff. You don't need very much because it is sticky on your skin. And so, you know, if you use a lot, you'll really notice it, but like you don't need to use a lot to get a lot out of it. And it is like the only product that I use that can just like rescue my skin overnight where, you know, I have scabs I've picked maybe, or that like crepey neck thing I was talking about, this genuinely actually does the trick. Of, like, it's, it's chock full of tons and tons and tons of really potent ingredients that just serve to nourish. You know, it's like brightening, it's nourishing, your skin just drinks it up. And I have never once heard from one of you guys that you bought this and were disappointed by it. I really believe like this and the Iconolab are like the two products that I would recommend for anyone. <laughs> like regardless of skin type, you're gonna get something out of this product. It is just that good. So yeah, that's my, again, full-throated endorsement for this. It is, it, it is game-changing. And finally, when I'm having breakouts, <laughs> it's been known to happen. Pregnancy is like completely out of my control. I rely heavily on this. This is just a really, really nice go-to and my light stem. My light stem for acne, which I don't have up here, but it is like a red and blue light treatment situation, genuinely, truly works. You know, I will leave it on a spot and just roast it. You can't overdo that thing. And so you just put it on, let it run through its complete cycle on one zit, it's like 30 minutes or whatever. Um, or you can kind of cycle it around as like maintenance, but either way, huge fan. But anyway, I'm shocked how long this actual jar has lasted me. I use this all the time and there's still, you know, I don't know, a quarter of the jar left or something. And this is a, I don't know, it's like a tingly, decongesting, brightening situation for specifically for like, you know, irritated, inflamed skin. They used this the first time on me when uh, I went for a facial at Milk and Honey. And afterwards I was like, what was that? Because it's active. Like you can feel it happening on your face and you can also use it, it says, as a spot treatment overnight. And so that's like what I will kind of seesaw it back and forth as. I will get out of the shower and if I'm having breakouts and stuff like that, it's actually just really, really nice to put this on. Feel that tingle, let it dry and, you know, and rinse it off and like your skin just feels awesome afterwards. There's no grittiness to this. It doesn't actually have any sort of like scrubby exfoliating properties to it or anything. But it also, I think, has some tea tree oil in it and that's also contributing to that like 
antiseptic tingle, which is just really, really lovely. It does a really, really good job. And again, a very gentle overnight spot treatment. Um, they have a black one, a black algae mask that is like their lightning mask that is supposed to be pretty like <laughs> only use in emergencies. And they have like a white algae mask that is supposed to be just like more of like a moisturizing mask. And so this is right in the middle. This is the, the Goldilocks of it all. And it works wonders. It is beautiful, beautiful stuff, especially when I'm breaking out. So anyway, that's my current skincare routine. I hope this is helpful for you guys. If you have any additional questions down below, I'll try to answer them. I have talked about this very recently that I am just, I'm not a skincare expert. I know my skin and I know my experience talking to my dermatologist and I try to understand what certain ingredients do. But if you're like, my skin type is this, is this going to work for me? I am only taking my best guess. Talk to a professional. <laughs> I am not a professional. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Also guys, um, subscribe to my vlog channel. I am uploading more and more over there lately. I will link that below. And also follow me on Instagram. If you can't find me, people have told me they can't find me. It's because my handle is Hey Khaki and not Khaki Reviews Beauty. And so I will link that below as well. I'm trying to get to 10,000 so I can get that sacred swipe up. So you guys just help me out if you are interested. Again, I'm not gonna say that my Instagram is the most exciting place in the world, but my stories are pretty fun. <laughs> My stories are pretty fun. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next time.